Hey my TypeScript fans, it's great to see you. As you can see, it got already dark in here and we will also go into the dark because we will look at the void keyword. The void keyword represents a type but also an operator and we will look at both sides of it. Let's go. The void type is used for functions that actually don't return a value. So let's say you have a function called log name, and here you get a name of type string, and all you want to do is logging that name to the console. So you log this name, and nothing else, yeah, you don't return a value, and you will see that TypeScript infers now a return type for you, which is void. So you can also go here to the function signature and explicitly put this return value of type void, and it will be okay. Using void as a return type is pretty boring. Ugh. Because you can't do anything with it. Yeah, it just says, hey, there is nothing that is being returned. Or there is nothing that is being assigned. For example, if you have a constant, abc, and you set it to the type of void, then you can initialize it with undefined. Yeah, so this is also fulfilling the contract of void. And if you set the strict null checks to false, then you can even assign null to this void type, but you can't assign void to it because void is actually here a type and not a value. And this on the right side is a value and on the left here, yeah, this type annotation is a type. So I can't use void as a value. I can only use it as a type. We've just learned three new things. At first, we've learned that every function that doesn't return a value gets by default the return value of type void. Second, we can use void only as a type, but not as a value. And third, when we use void as a type, then we can assign it with either undefined or when we disable the strict null checks, also with null. That's already great, but there is more to void because instead of just using it as a type, we can also use it as an operator. Void is not just a type, but also an operator. And this operator exists even in JavaScript, which is why it is defined here in the Mozilla Developer Network. And the Mozilla Developer Network tells us that the void operator returns undefined, meaning that whatever you have after it, it will be neglected and undefined is being returned. So there is that example here of a constant. The constant is called output and output is assigned to one. But in front of the one, we will find the void operator, which means that the one, the number type is being neglected and we will get back an undefined type. Same with functions. When we execute functions, for example, console log, then this function is being executed, but nothing is being returned when we put void in front of it. We can double check that in our TypeScript example. Here is some code that returns a number, one plus two. This number will be returned and stored in a variable that I will call result. But when I use the void operator, then this return value will be thrown away and we will get back undefined. That is good to know, but actually also sounds stupid, doesn't it? Why should we ever do that? Well, let me show you one very great use case for it. Here is the use case. I have an asynchronous function. That function returns then by default a promise of type void because nothing is being returned. I can annotate this promise void here and then I can execute this function. But I have very strict ESLint rules. And my ESLint rules tell me that I have to await this promise or I have to catch it because there is an ESLint rule that says no floating promises. And we are not handling the side effect properly, which can lead to errors because imagine you make an asynchronous call that then crashes your application and you're not handling this error and not showing it to the user. Yeah, that can create a very bad UX. So you should always do that. But sometimes you don't want to handle all these error cases. 
Yeah, of course you can write now everywhere a catch and you can say, okay, I'm catching here this error and then I inform my user there was an error. I can do all of this. But if you're working with React, for example, you may have already error boundaries that catch your errors on a higher level. Or you have tracking calls that you just want to fire and forget about. Well, you would still then have to catch them with that ESLint rule in place. Or you can, of course, put then this very ugly disable next line at TypeScript ESLint no floating promises pragma. So what should we do? Well, as we have learned, we can just forget about the return type. And how do we forget about the return type? Well, we prefix it with void. Having void in front of your function call is much better than putting such an ESLint comment line. And I will show you why. With void in front, you have it next to the code, which means that if you move the code somewhere else, for example, if you cut the complete line of code here and paste it somewhere else, the void will go with it. If you have that ESLint comment, this won't be the case. So if I just have this ESLint comment with my function call and I move my function call, then the ESLint line is not being moved and I would have to manually move it again. I hope you liked this little video about the void keyword. And if you liked it, then please give me a thumbs up, write a nice comment or subscribe to my channel. I'm doing all of these videos for free. Yeah, it's very important to me to put out best practices and great quality content that is accessible for everyone. And if you want to support it, then just give me a thumbs up or write some feedback if you disliked it so that I can improve on my next video. Thank you very much and have a great day.